Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Doing Business in Bentonville. I'm Andy Wilson. I'm your host today. I'm so excited to announce our program this morning. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's what you're going to do. So my guest today, let's just get right to it, okay? Leon Nicholas, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. We're so glad to have you and his counterpart here, Kerry Bailey. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks. We're so excited. You know, uh, and here's why. First of all, Leon... Welcome back to Northwest Arkansas. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's great. It feels like a second home, and it's great to be back to the it's second so home. Who says you, you can't come home again, right? Well, you know, you can come home. And uh, Leon and I go way back on the DVB when we had live events, and Leon was, was a great guest speaker for us. And, uh, and so now we, we're, we have him back here in Northwest Arkansas. He's in our studio and all the way from New England, yeah. New Hampshire. So that's right. awesome. Wish there were a direct flight, but no direct flight yet. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I wish there was too. Yeah, that's fine. And Carrie is local. You've been here like 30 years now. Indeed. And Indeed. Our plus, right? Yes. And he lives here in Northwest Arkansas. And we're going to get into their roles in their company. But I just wanted to spend a few minutes personally with these guys. We had a wonderful dinner last night. Great conversation. And you're going to really enjoy this topic. But let's get straight into uh, about their company and their roles. They work with a great company called Smurfit West Rock. And I recently acquisition there, uh, Smurfit, added to West Rock, and we can talk more about that. Leon is the vice president of Retail Insights and Solutions. Right. What is that? That's a good question. I ask myself a lot, and when I don't know, I ask Carrie. Uh, no, uh, what uh, what that is is uh, it's a role. Uh, I've been in it now for gosh, almost uh, almost seven years, mm-hmm. and I work across Westrock, uh, sort of Westrock, and uh, and also the supplier community to better connect uh, uh, sort of Westrock's packaging and display and e-commerce solution portfolio to better connect that to our customers' needs in the marketplace. But through the lens of retail insights, uh, that's my background. That's where I sort of have come up through. And so what I try to do is offer an end market perspective to our to our customers and also to w- within uh, within our company from a strategy perspective mm-hmm. um, to make packaging be the solution mm-hmm. uh, to the sorts of uh, endeavors that our customers are trying to solve. So it's uh, sort of a market in perspective. And you've been, you've been in this space a long, uh, quite a while in your career, right? Yeah, about 30, 31 years. Right. Yeah. Right. Great. And, uh, such a uh, expert, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna really tap into Leon's expertise here in a moment. You're going you're gonna see uh, in large uh, from both of these gentlemen today. Kerry, Vice President West Rock, but you're in charge of the Walmart Global Business. That's true. So talk to us about that. What's that, what do you do there with Walmart? Well, thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. Uh, I guess from our point of view, what we had lacked prior to my role was kind of an enterprise person that really took the whole organization. Uh, you know, when in our CPG world, we talk about carrying the bag, you know, for, for all the product you have. And uh, in our world, we didn't have that role of an enterprise conversation or relationship with Walmart, Sam's Club. And so to bring the enterprise conversation to life between the organizations. Um, my background served that uh, that role. I've been in business here doing work with Walmart and Sam's Club for a little over 30 years. And so uh, talking from shelf execution to supply chain and then obviously growing into the e-commerce space and in this new, new age, um, just having someone that could talk universally around that, I think has uh, served the organization well in elevating you know, what we come to offer uh, in the conversation around fiber, mm-hmm. paper. All right. So. Well, good. Well, again, both of you gentlemen, thank you uh, for your time today. Thank you for being here. Now, let me introduce our topic today. Uh, over the past several months, uh, I have spoken with Leon and Kerry uh, several times, and and what they're going to do today is they're going to really help us understand this unbelievable space called e-commerce, our omni-channel. When we began DVB, one of the things we focused on was the importance of omni-channel and understanding on omni-channel. In fact, we we try every day to demystify omni-channel here, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. 
But let's set the stage a bit and let's talk about e-commerce. And since Carrie is uh, works with Walmart, let's just use Walmart as an example. Uh, last year, Carrie, Walmart uh, e-commerce did over a hundred billion dollars. Think about that. Amazing. One hundred billion outside of brick and mortar. Now that is shows where this thing is going, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, a hundred billion. And then we just read recently, and I just spoke with Walmart recently uh, that Walmart has expanded the categories in the marketplace, and they, you know, the category expansion, the multi-channel solutions. Um, they they have 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 just recently had in San Francisco an innovation for sellers, bringing hundreds of sellers to San Francisco to teach them to help them to grow the e-commerce business and get ready for the holiday season that's approaching quickly. So, Carrie, as you think about this on Walmart, uh, this is where you spend your time, correctly? Indeed, indeed. Uh, you make a great reference there, Andy. I mean. Think about what we do in June when Walmart hosts the open call mm -hmm. uh, where folks who are trying to elevate their business or introduce their business to Walmart, uh, that's where they get their start, right? And right. They, get the, they get the Willy Wonka gold card and they get to kind of do the fast right. forward on product introduction. Right. But that effort right out there in San Francisco around the seller's marketplace, another good reflection of them bringing that new audience to the table mm -hmm. and talking about how to grow in that marketplace mm -hmm. space. So I think that uh, they, number one, they have so much to offer, the intelligence and the opportunity to speak to such a wide audience. Mm -hmm. You look at today's shopper at Walmart, totally diverse shopper from where we were, you know, 10, even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so today when the sellers come to have that conversation, I mean, learning how they're going to approach mm -hmm. the marketplace space I think it's just so dynamic because the same thing happens at open call. Mm -hmm. You have someone that says, I've got a really great product and these emerging brands where Walmart's investing in those new brands and the emerging brands and the audience that they get, the very niche audiences that they have the opportunity to speak to are just so nuanced. And I think that their ability uh, and what is necessary to yeah. get that customer on board and then certainly how do you build loyalty behind that? Right. And I think that's an astounding part of what Walmart's learned in the last couple of three years since COVID is how they capitalize on that loyalty factor mm -hmm. within the Omnichannel. Right. What can we sell to them in the store? How do we bridge that into their everyday shopping space uh, in an online sort of way? Oh, no. I was just going to, you know, just going to add there, you know, you're right. It's, it's really two way learning in that regard. You know, obviously the, the, the supplier learns about retail from the world's largest, right? Um, and they, they learn fundamentals of, you know, of go to market scale to go to market, not just, you know, your, your, uh, um, your, your small uh, operation. Right. Right. But then of course, Walmart, you know, begins to, uh, a much deeper understanding of some of the innovative dynamics that are occurring, the leading edge mm -hmm. of where innovation is happening. Mm -hmm. And so this marketplace opportunity and the growth of marketplace, you know, really is a two way learning kind yeah. of conversation. Great yeah. point. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I mean, I think you set up really nicely on what we're going to talk about. And I mentioned earlier is that we're going to get in very deep from these two subject matter experts uh, with me today into what we're, we're calling five principles, if you will. And what these principles are, we're going to walk through them one at a time, not only to, um, to, to educate you, but also expand your thinking and expand your knowledge around this massiveness called e-commerce. Because mm -hmm. it's here to stay. We need to become great at it. Our cust your customers are going to expect you to become great at it. And whoever is great at it is going to win in the marketplace. That is why Walmart has been focused so heavily on this. And they're making great strides. We know we talk, to, we talk about Amazon here on our program from time to time. Amazon does a great job in this space. They, they do a really great job. The advantage Walmart has over Amazon is to bring in order. So if you work for a retailer today and you have a brick and mortar, how do you integrate both of these philosophies and systems in your business? If you're not into that yet, you need to run and get into that because it's here to stay, I believe. So Leon, 
Uh, in our conversation, we talked about these five principles. So yeah. let's get into that. So let's just start, and, and both uh, and I know both of you are going to contribute into that. And uh, yeah. so let's go. Yeah, let, let me just outline the, the five principles, sure. if, if that's okay, yeah, just please. to kind of set things up. And then, of course, we're going we're gonna to dive deeply into I love those. It. Yes. Uh, into those. The, the first one, I think, is really, and, and I think you always have to start here, um, but it's really the um, sort of the state of the, the state of the shopper. You know, where is the shopper today? Who is the shopper today? How is it cha- has the shopper uh, changed? Have there been some fundamental changes? And I would argue that there there uh, there have been um, some 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 fundamental changes in in the in the shoppers' makeup and in the in the shoppers' um, approach to commerce. So I want to almost want to start start there because I think that's important understanding e commerce. The, the The second idea would be really the importance of uh, the renewed importance of analytics. And the richness of data that is available today, um, largely, um, you know, through through different uh, systems and different programs, and the impact that AI will have in the future. But it's understanding also data in the context of uh, really the uh, alternative revenue streams that have been set up now uh, in place. What Walmart I think is called the new flywheel. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. The, the, it's the, the addition to the productivity loop. Yes. You know, uh, which is which is uh, really, really fascinating. So I wanted, wanted to sort of think about that. Mm-hmm. Third is um, is sustainability. Mm-hmm. Um, sustainability uh, having become table stakes now, I think, for for so many companies uh, out there. I want to talk a little bit about that and how with with Walmart, it might manifest itself a little bit differently. And, and so Carrie and I will probably, you know, uh, have some time to, to chat about that. Uh, fourth uh, would be, uh, generally speaking, here's this idea of the smart supply chain, mm-hmm. you know, where product is identifiable. Uh, it, it raises its hand and says, I'm here. Uh, and just how critically important um, that is from a supply chain innovation perspective, um, that uh, the, the capacity for everything to be identifiable. Um, and then fifth would be automation, kind of its close cousin, I would argue. Um, and just how important automation has now become to end-to-end uh, operations, you know, all the way from, you know, from, from fulfillment center all the way to, to, uh, to, to the store, um, and what the implications are going to be for our industry of a more robotified mm-hmm. and automated uh, sort of supply chain. Um, I don't know that necessarily our industry has really gotten its arms around yet just how fundamental a change mm-hmm. uh, this is going to be from the days when and Carrie and I used to stock freight at uh, at the at the grocery store. Um, I think within a few years, people are going to wonder what you're talking about. You know, that's a good point. I know when I started at Walmart out of college uh, in the trainee program, I think I started in the stock room. Yeah, unload trucks. Yeah, that's where it all began. Yep. You know, and it ended at the checkouts. You know, when the customers were satisfied when they left. With a right, I did night crunch. Crunch. Yeah, night. You know, and yeah, stocked freight o- over overnight. You know, unloaded trucks Absolutely. and cut cases, and so, so okay. This is going to be exciting. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. So let's talk about shopper, the state of shopper. Yeah, the the, the it's um, you know, it's it's fascinating. We've come out of this uh, this COVID period, mm-hmm. right? And um, and I think you've seen some really fundamental uh, some fundamental changes in in the shopper. I think the shopper is much more. A health and wellness oriented now, mm-hmm. having guy come out of a health crisis, mm-hmm. uh, they're much more oriented toward that today mm-hmm. in in a lot of different ways, and that manifests itself in you know sporting goods sales, but also in ingredient shopping and uh, people just much more concerned about about that. I think the single biggest variable that 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 defines the shopper today is the pursuit of value. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, now that doesn't mean that the shopper hasn't always sought value, but I think it's today top of mind. Mm-hmm. For the shopper, and somebody goes, well, it must just be the lower income consumer or the high. Actually, that's not the case. Um, across the income spectra, we are seeing this enormous focus on the pursuit of value. Now, I would argue that you can look at this in in, in a couple of ways, and I call this the numerator denominator way to think about value. The numerator on the value equation is, you know, what do you get, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the denominator is how much you pay. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think today what you've got is um, middle, upper and mid, middle and upper uh, income shoppers. They're numerator shoppers. 
They're very focused on what you get. They're all right, actually paying a little bit more for something. So think about uh, club membership. Think about, uh, you, you know, um, people buying um, a, a apparel or in some cases um, um, consumer electronics that are seen as, as necessary, you know, for their lives. They'll pay more for that. They're getting a return on their investment. But they're very focused on the numerator. On the other end is the shopper who's saying, listen, I'll even get a little bit less. I just want to pay less. So those are denominator shoppers. Mm. You know, I, I want to pay less money. Um, and, you know, this is where I think you're seeing this bifurcation in terms of how people are thinking about value. They're both focused on value, just on different sides of the, of, of the fraction. We're seeing shoppers much more focused today on trip management. Okay, so we're actually seeing, as a, as a rule, trips are actually okay. They're, 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 they're fine. It's tickets that are, that are down. Um, and, and that's because the shopper is managing inflation, which the shopper still has not adjusted to, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Because it just happened too fast, too rapidly, mm -hmm. and too much. And so they're managing their baskets in, in many cases. Not, not, in many cases, some, some of it is trade down, but in many cases what it is is they're just putting fewer items in the basket. And so you've got fewer items in the basket, but in, in some cases actually trips are, uh, are, are up. So they're managing their household finances um, that way. And then the, I think the, 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 the last thing I would say is that you've got a shopper today who is much more inclined toward the array of private labels uh, right. that are out there. Sure. Um, we continue to see share growth. And in fact, over the past several, uh, several months, the uh, consumer package goes share growth for mm -hmm. private labels actually started mm -hmm. to tick up again. Mm -hmm. Um, as the shopper recognizes, they don't actually have to make a trade-off for you know quality mm -hmm. there. That they can um, they can get a very very high quality uh, product, and oftentimes uh, with uh, with the latest trends associated with it, et cetera, um, at a at a at a great price. So we, we we're in a, a, a yet another wave of private label uh, expansion. But again, for me, it's value. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it all comes down to value. How that value gets expressed right. uh, is is very different, and sometimes the that upper income consumer um, might not seem to be, you know, focusing on value, uh, but they are just at more in the in the numerator. All right. That is excellent. I think I think you make two great points. I'm going to ask you a question here in a moment. Leon set you up for a layup, but um, good thing. I think that the the comment around private brand or owned brands is uh, spot on. I mean, yeah. we see all across the retail landscape, every single retailer investing in their own brands space, mm -hmm. largely because many of the things that Leon referred to, but it's a good time for them to invest yes. because mm -hmm. they've elevated their awareness mm -hmm. with the shopper. That's a tremendous platform for them to build loyalty on as well. And as I mentioned earlier, right that loyalty component to retail today in the absence of a lot of folks who used to fill that space. I mean, think about who we've lost at retail in the last five, six years, mm -hmm. okay? Who didn't survive COVID at retail? The retailers that are left have to pick up that space. Mm -hmm. And so the ability and the timing of all of that in the investment of their own brands at mm -hmm. this juncture really offers them an opportunity to exceptionally exceed their loyalty platforms. Mm -hmm. I think it's just tremendous for retail to to make that investment now. Um, and I was going to ask you, Leon, you were talking about the numerator, denominator space. How do you think that, I, I know I have my own opinion, but you look at the way shoppers are buying use in the reference to the lower ticket, but the continued trips, has pantry buying gone away? I mean, pantry was something that we all spoke about because in a fluid economy, the shopper could afford to have a little bit extra in the pantry. You know? right. And for a large, for a long time in our community, we talked about the stock up by, you That's know, right. the heaping carts when they got to the register, uh, right. you know, the, the, the family size bags of everything. Can I mean, just reflect on that for me? We entry by kind of sort of what it, it, it's, it's a good question because it's fundamental to the economics right. mm -hmm. of a big box, right? Mm -hmm. It's fundamental to those economics. Instead, what we are seeing is particularly for the lower and to some extent, and, and actually increasingly the middle income consumer, um, they're doing less of that. They're doing more multiple fill in trips yeah. mm -hmm. um, because they can control expenditures that way. Mm -hmm. What I would say, though, is for the upper 
income consumer, larger the consumer making over a hundred thousand dollars a year, that household, mm -hmm. um, they're still doing pantry loading, we'll call it, mm -hmm. but they're tending to do that at the clubs. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the clubs become a beneficiary, and we all see the mm -hmm. some of the results, uh, mm -hmm. recent the recent results from the club, uh, the yeah, from Costco, from Sarah, Costco, St. Even Atlanta. BJ's, yeah. Um, yeah. very uh, continued success, y comping the comp, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, right, and, right? right. and, and yeah. it's a. And that, that is because that shopper can afford to say, I'll spend, I don't know, I don't know what you spend, but I go to the club with my kids, $400 or something, I can afford to spend that at the club because I'm getting a better, I'm, I'm getting a, a the, the value equation, as I said about earlier, yeah. it works out for, for me. I get more. I might, I might pay, I'm paying $400, right. but I'm getting more. So I'm focused on that numerator so I can I can yeah. go ahead and make that expenditure. I can afford to make that expenditure. So you're seeing with the upper income consumers that stock up shopping to some extent might become more a, a purvey of those who can afford a stock up. I think it's yeah. interesting when I'm doing, when we're walking stores and, and clubs in general, um, looking at the dynamics of the shopper themselves, because like you, I have younger or married children and you know, when I watch them shop, how they shop at a, at a Walmart, and then also to that point, how they shop at a club. Yeah. And when I know when our club audience, our, our, our Sam Club team looks at their next shopper beyond my wife and I, what's that next generation looking for? What do they need? I can see them grooming the assortment. You know, mm -hmm. obviously they need the 210 count diaper box, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is That's hardly enough, right? <laughs> right. But beyond that, yeah. what do they need in their yeah. home, you know, to yeah. sustain on the paycheck that they're taking home right. today? That's right. And I think it's real interesting to watch them massage the mix yeah. and then how they're speaking to that younger generation, that next shopper mm -hmm. element. Um, a lot of dynamics going on in that. It, it's the mix. And it's also, as you as you know, we have with, with the kids that age. The comparison it used to always be Sands versus Costco, Sands versus Costco, and that's still very much the. I'm not suggesting otherwise. Right. But now the 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 um, the club mm -hmm. program for younger generations is Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. their club. You, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right? Pay membership. Yeah. Just like you do the club. That's their uh, membership. Yeah. And so you're competing against. Yeah. Uh, it's not just a different retailer. It's a different. Go to market approach, yeah, market place, right? right? right. Um, yeah. You know where right. where an Amazon will have you know what is it the, the uh, streaming video, or right? Various other uh, ancillary types of programs to sweeten the value of that mm -hmm. membership. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden now, you know that comes into play here. We're well, staying with a customer for a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about dollar stores for a moment mm -hmm. uh, while we're here with the customer, mm -hmm. uh, because you know this for the first time in in, in years, I don't say decades, but years, dollar stores are struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we know what's happened in the past, and you know the growth of Dollar General and others. It's just been on a speed, uh, but now all of a sudden. What's happening to dollar stores? So as we think about the customer, what's your thoughts on that? I think it's really interesting. I, uh, to your point, Andy, I kind of had to smirk a little bit in the latest headlines where, you know, Dollar General felt like Walmart was getting their dollar, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's interesting because I think as families, um, even in, in different demographies, as families or households have made those quantifiable decisions that, Leon was referring to earlier that numerator. What am I getting, or what am I getting? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that when they're walking into a Walmart, for example, uh, they're seeing a broader assortment. Mm -hmm. They're seeing an offering that's just more appealing today. And I give Walmart a lot of credit for having the clarity and the cleanliness of that merchandising philosophy at retail that's really winning out uh, no. over that dollar that dollar shopper, that dollar general shopper. Wow. And then I don't think you can forget, yeah. Leon, the yes. value in the Walmart supply chain. Yeah. The bigger retailers finding value in the supply chain, wow. they're passing that on. That's our EDLC, EDLP yeah. model. Yeah. And you can't beat that. You can argue yeah. it. You can arm wrestle all you want, but those are pennies to the table. Well, you know, it's we were in a, we were, Karen and I were walking a super center around here uh, just yesterday, and the reality is, is now, you know, one of the ways that dollar 
the dollar channel used to succeed against uh, against Walmart was they they offered a lot of smaller uh, price points, mm-hmm. oftentimes whole whole uh, dollar price point one, two, four, mm-hmm. etc. Um, that gave you the sense that okay, if I've got five dollars at the end of the at the end of the month, right? The fact that say a big box would have you know a forty pack of water for four ninety nine, well then there goes my five dollars. But I can meet I could meet a broader share of my meal requirements, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. pasta and sauce and bread and everything else. I could I could get more stuff, more components, mm-hmm. more share of my requirements at a dollar store. But what we noticed yesterday when we were walking among a lot of things we noticed was, hey, wait a second, you walk right in here into the produce section. I see price points here that are 25 cents, 58 cents, mm-hmm. the good, good price on, on, uh, on bananas. You've got a lot of lower price points in there to attract that, let's call it dollar store shopper. Um, that, is, that is important. The, the, other, the other dynamic for the dollar store shopper is, uh, in many cases, that, that shopper who you know, certainly Walmart has benefited, but there's also a, a, a significant class of the dollar store shopper that has, mm-hmm. has traded to the food banks. Mm-hmm. Um, right. There's no question if we're seeing right. an increase uh, in, um, in in that. Mm-hmm. Um, th- the other thing that's happened with dollar is dollar has increasingly been, over the past several years, been attracting a more middle and upper middle income shopper. You certainly could say yeah. that about Dollar Tree. Absolutely, right. yes. Um, that shopper, that shopper has said, you know, do I really need... 20 balloons mm-hmm. for my uh, daughter's, uh, you know, birthday at the Dollar Tree, um, mm-hmm. I need five. Mm-hmm. That has hit them. So the discretionary purchases, mm-hmm. which can be higher margin, right. mm-hmm. the discretionary mm-hmm. purchases at the dollar store from the upper middle uh, income shopper, uh, I think, that pain was realized mm-hmm. in this last quarter, uh, realizing its absence. This is such a great discussion on the customer. And I want to just go back on the line something, Carrie, you said. Uh, I think you said it so well that, you know, Walmart has created clarity in, uh, in, in, in their marketplace, if you will. Right. You know, because you walk in, clarity, clarity on price points, clarity on assortments, mm-hmm. bring in that. Uh, their private label, introducing new private labels for under five dollars or whatever. Right. right, that's the learning. I think if you're in retail business today, <clears throat> back to what the gentleman said, it's got to be a lot of clarity in that. Because mm. if not, the consumers hit with so much. Right, and it's really on the retailer to create clarity online yes. and brick and mortar. Yep. Exactly. And it's a great discussion. Wow, exactly. I love it. We got a lot more to say, but we're not going to get to those other four pillars if we keep going here. Okay, well, well we're going to move on. All right. I knew this would be a great opportunity for us, but the depth here uh, from you, from each of you is so great. And uh, uh, so uh, but there will be a part two to this. Leon, Carrie, thank you again. It's been so wonderful having you. Um, you have to come back. Okay. Uh, well, as long as you invite okay. us, we'll be here. How's that? Uh, you have to come back. Uh, I, your knowledge, your insight uh, on these topics today was exceptional. Uh, I know I have enjoyed it thoroughly. I know our our viewers uh, will enjoy this. Um, I I will tell you that I was I'm encouraged. I'm inspired uh, by your by your uh, comments today. Your knowledge. You know, uh, as a person that loves retail my whole career, yeah. what, you, what you have done today has encouraged me. And to our guests, thank you so much um, for coming. To our viewers, thank you. It's been great having you. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, you continue to do just great things with us. You talk about it. I get wonderful notes from many of you on LinkedIn. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, let us know how we can improve always. Um you are continuing to grow our our viewership. We're, we're now in multiple countries, I think 30 plus countries. So thank you for that. Um, we really appreciate your time. Again, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you. I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.